Good morning subscribers, Geekonomics here today and just wanting to really go back to something which I started last year which was to just give a little rundown and a resume on uh, some of the articles in the Sunday Times. Uh, those of you who follow me on Twitter and various social media you will know that I often refer to, indeed on a weekly basis, refer to the articles by David Smith which are actually tip top for A-level economists. And I just want to pull out a few articles here. Actually, there's so much here actually. Um, this is a nice way to do it because I wouldn't have time necessarily to go through this with students during lessons. So let's cut to the chase here. So the first article I'm going to refer to is uh, on the front page here and it's Branson and Souter in 52 million real bonanza. And this is referencing uh, the Virgin billionaire, Sir Richard Branson, and the stagecoach tycoon, Sir Brian Souter, and they're sharing in a payout of more than £50 million. And this is for their running of the West Coast Main Line. Now, in the northeast of England, as we are here, to get from Newcastle to London, we used to go on the Virgin train operated East Coast Main Line. Now, of course, that has been taken over and now it's called the LNER. And that particular service was never particularly great, quite often delayed, quite often overcrowded, and it's similar, actually, that's at least what I've read here, it's similar in terms of what was going on on the West Coast Main Line. So to think that these guys are pocketing uh, 52 million seems a little bit, uh, doesn't quite sit right, I don't think, with me, anyway. And they're writing the article here saying that perhaps this is good reason for renationalizing of the railway operations. Now, I'm not sure I would go that far necessarily, but it's interesting the thoughts expressed there. So that, that's article number one, Virgin. And Virgin is plastered all over the local news media here this morning in Newcastle because, of course, Virgin has just the tie-up with the Clydesdale, has just gone through, I think, formally, and the, the new chief executive is at the Virgin has headquarters in Gosforth this morning. So it'll be interesting just to see how that all shakes out. Next point, traders dump corporate bonds. This is the next article. And this is with reference to what's happening in the United States of America with regard to Jerome J. Powell, who, as you know, is the governor of the, the Fed in the United States. And pretty intent, really, on normalizing U.S. base rates. So, as you know, they increased it just last month. To up to two and to two point two five percent, and they reckon by the end of next year, two thousand nineteen, the base rate in the states will be up to about three percent. Now, this is having unintended consequences, if you will, maybe on the uh, bond markets in the states because investors are now thinking, well, if I can get uh, two three percent on um, U.S. bonds. I'm not sure exactly what rate they are earning. Oh, here we go. Investors can now earn 3.16% on a 10-year government bond. And so they're thinking to themselves, well, as rates normalise in the States, and that then feeds into, obviously, other financial assets, such as the government bonds, why on earth would you take a huge risk with your client's money when you can get that sort of return on the bond market? And so it's interesting the way funds are being diverted. And they are particularly referencing here, I think it goes on in the next page, talking about capital flight and the fact that so much money is now piling into US bond market that and it's being extracted from and pulled out of um, emerging market economies where so much money had gone in the recent past because, of course, it was earning quite a significant substantial return and now it's all being pulled out of there and back into the States. Now, of course, from the United States point of view, that's putting upside pressures onto the exchange rate, which will obviously take its toll on export, US exporters. So there's a whole sort of um, 
there's a whole sort of cycle going on there. And it's just interesting that you, if you know your economic theory well, and you can piece all that together. So I, I recommend that article to you as well. It's only quite a short one. I think it is carried on some. Ah, oh yes, uh, Mr. Erwin Stelzer talks about it actually in his article. Um, as he says here, Mr. Seltzer says, if you can get a reasonable return on US securities, why leave your money in riskier bonds of emerging economies? Higher rates in the US suck capital out of those countries, driving up the dollar, which emerging market economies must buy to pay the interest on their dollar-denominated IOUs. So all sorts of things at play there. Very interesting. Uh, third little article I'd like to share with you is by uh, Tommy Stubbington, another guy who I reference quite often in my lessons, and he's talking about economic growth. Interesting for my GCSE students, we've just been looking at the whole notion of economic growth, and Tommy is saying that the forecast for current year by the Treasury is that the growth rate has been cut to 1.3%, and that's the weakest level since 2009. And putting that down to two things, obviously the Brexit effect, and also, as inflation climbs in the UK, currently 2.7%, uh, that's going to have a, a bite and put a bit of a dent into consumer spending, as one would expect. So that's an interesting article there for Tommy. Nice little article, a nice little graph there on annual GDP growth. I'll be sure to share that with my Year 10 GCSE economists. And finally then to uh, David Smith's article, A Bright New Era for Pay or Just Another False Dawn. So this is with regard to productivity and wage growth. For those of you who don't know, I do share David Smith's articles every week on my Dropbox account, which you can find via Twitter. And I put that there for A-level economists so that they have the article and they also have a set of questions. Just building up your portfolio of knowledge so that when it comes to the exam, you have up-to-date knowledge that you can bang in. And that really does, ladies and gentlemen, that's one thing which helps to separate the A grades from the A star grades. So, uh, Mr. D. Smith in this one, a couple of nice little charts there on productivity, as you well know, I'm sure. The UK has a bit of a productivity uh, laggard and David Smith is just talking about the fact that maybe, just maybe, uh, we are about to see the end of the pay squeeze but obviously Brexit and so on could put the buffers on that. As one of my students was just saying, it's, a lot of this is rather quant qualitative rather than quantitative. And I'm going to share this with my year 13 students today. So I'll point you to this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Economic Review from February 2018. The, and the, the great article in it on the UK's productivity problem, exploring the data behind the headlines. So this attempts to be a little bit more quantitative uh, in its analysis. So, ladies and gents, we're going to leave it at that for today. And uh, hopefully I'll try and get this going on a more regular basis. Bye for now. Thank you.